Okay, got it. Okay, hang on. I think I got it to go in landscape mode. Here we go. Yay. Hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just practicing and I wanted to show you a little haul. Maybe just make up a card. So um, if you're still here, great. If not, we're still, we're still working. So <laughs> golly, let me see here. Let me get myself back to Prism Live. Okay. Um, where are you? It seems to be going from what I'm seeing, but let me just refresh here. Ah, you stinking thing. Uh, using an iPad, sorry. Okay, videos. Okay, here we go. All right. Everybody see the screen normally? If anybody's here, nobody's here. That's okay. Hi. <laughs> so, um, I'm practicing here. I want to make sure that, you know, I'm getting things in frame. There's my hands over here. Okay, I need to move it a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So, I wanted to show you a haul I got today. Now, these are mica powders that I got from Amazon. They were $17.99. And there's a bunch, y'all. We got cherry, maple. Ooh, that maple's gorgeous. Oh, uh, magical blue, which looks like white. Oh, I see. It's got like an iridescent to it. We got rosemary, cactus, chestnut. Oh, uh, well. Lotus forget me not peach which I don't know my idea of peach is a little bit more orangey we got lime chocolate mm -mm. wait there's lots more fuchsia magical green kiwi magical violet oh these are gonna be fun lemon pearl Datura, green apple, bronze, magical red. We're going to have to play with these magical ones because how is it magic? Peach blossom, beer, mmm, beer, blueberry, orchid, lavender. There's more. Oh boy, is there more. Got Tangerine, white, didn't I already have a coffee one, another coffee one, pink with little unicorn on it, C for all the C stuff we're doing right now, corn, which looks gold to me, ruby, black, papaya, um, I, okay, <laughs> The naming conventions, Cala, oh, that's a pretty one, kind of a orangey pink. Avocado, they're pretty close to their name. Lilac, teal, there's more. Yes, there's more. Blue rose, hair, brown, violet, I thought I already saw a violet. Gerbera, Gerbera. Bear. Oh, how cute is that? And magical gold. Gray. Got a little koala on it. Wine. Chartreuse. And rose. Okay, y'all. That's 50 mica powders for $17.99 I got on Amazon. So what we want to do, let's just kind of play with these a little bit. And I think I'll use the uh, texture paste. Wait, this is transparent matte. I don't want the matte. I want the gloss. Here we go. Look at the gloss. Okay, and let's get a paper here. Okay, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this 
transparent gloss and gloop a little. And I think I'll use this to gloop the paste. I'll use this one. I get these at the dollar store. Um, for a dollar, you get three in a pack. Let's just gloop a little bit of this texture paste. I really kind of hate to do it on paper because it's going to rub in, but we'll try it. Um, oopsie. Okay, that wasn't a fair representation. Let's clean that off a little better. Try again here. Just tap that on there. All right, we're going to do, we're going to try this magical red and see what happens where the magic is. All right, I'm just going to take a little bit, tiny bit on the end of my knife, drop it on and mix it in. Yeah, so it doesn't look red to me. It probably has like a, yeah, it's kind of got like a red undertone to it. So if you were to do it over something red, you'll kind of see, I don't know how, see it's got a little bit of pink undertone, pretty cool. Let's try one of the solid ones. <sighs> okay. Get a paper towel. Clean that off. And let's get another gloop of this texture paste. keep getting the blue in there. I know I'm wiping this thing off, but it's just not coming off. Let's go with, oh, which one? And, uh, too many to choose from. Let's go with forget-me-not. Let's see how that one looks. Okay, so just dip a tiny bit into here. Just need the teeniest amount, I think. I don't know yet. We'll find out. Let's mix that in. Mixes in really nice. And here is the Forget Me Not. And it matches pretty well the bag, don't you think? Hi, Pam. So I'm practicing here, but I just went ahead and did it alive anyway um, to show off all these cool mica powders that I got for 18 bucks on Amazon. And I wanted to test them, you know, for that price, I, I'm kind of hoping they're decent. Look, let's try this ruby one, and I'm using them with just the uh, transparent matte texture paste. I hope I can be heard okay. Can you hear me? I'm not sure. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know. I need a better. All my little knives are kind of dirty. Uh, let's see if I can get a clean scoop out of here. Let's do right here. All right, let's try another cut. I am just. All these things are a mess. They just are a mess. Um, oh yeah, we're going to try the ruby. I need a little, little spoon. Oh, you know what? I have little spoons. Where did I put it? Never mind. We'll just go with what we have here. Just make sure this is cleaned off. Take a tiny bit of this ruby. Nah, that's way too much. Oh God, that's so pretty. See that? Let's get this up so you can see it. Let's mix it in. Mix it in really well. Most of it's on the knife. Yeah, I probably could have done with a little bit more transparent paste, but there's the ruby. Ooh. These are gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I love Natasha's videos. I do. And um, these ones I saw from a lady that was doing the paper beads. And she was mixing them with, uh, well, it was English, but it was something like deco art to color the beads, to dip the beads. 
Uh, let's try this Cala. I mean, the price of these, it's ridiculously cheap, and look how much you get. I mean, okay, let's, you know, unflatten the bag here. Yeah, well, I can't, so it's too, it's thick. You get a lot in there. So if there's 50 of them and it was $17.99 before tax, what are you paying for each? Yeah, I know. I practice. I, this is why I wanted to get on and practice is with my camera to make sure I got it going right. Let's see here. I've got mostly a mess here. Oh, I needed a little bit more paste. This probably isn't. The, I'm probably better off just to test it on here because the paper wants to absorb that. We'll just use this to rub it off. What color should I use? Bear, Jabera. Here's the pearl. Cactus is kind of cool. It's kind of a greeny. Yeah, those are cool. Oh God, there's a lot of pur pick which purple. Okay, there's a lot of purple. Um, let's see here. <laughs> pick a purple. I think that's, and then there's magical violet, which is like, it just kind of gives a little bit of a hue. So let's do a purple. Let's do, let's do this really pretty pearly purple. Lavender. Okay. Let's do lavender. And I'm a little bit behind here um, with the chat. Even though I have it on live chat, it's just the typical nature of the way things go for me. Let's grab a little bit of this, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna scrape the bag. Well, or not. I feel like I'm in the 70s. Okay, just dump a little on there. Mix it together. Anyway, if you go to notafraidtocolor.com. That's my Amazon store. And if you order through there, it doesn't cost you any extra, but I get a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I mean half a penny on the dollar, maybe. All I know is I have to make $10 a month to stay on the affiliate program. <laughs> okay, here's the purple. This is the, which one did we do just now? Oh, I ought to remember to close these, the lavender. I mean, they're highly pigmented. Here's the lavender. And you probably get as much in these bags as you do, you know, like the Ken Oliver stuff. I wonder if it would work like that. Should we try it? <laughs> Thanks, Pam. I think you might be the only person here. My husband might be here lurking, or my son. You never know. You know what we're going to do? Guess what we're going to do? We're going to grab a piece of watercolor. And we're going to get it wet. Where is my water squirter? I want to get all this other crap out of the way. I'm going to get it wet. I like to get them pretty wet. And let's just drop some of this on. You don't know the Ken Oliver stuff? I'm going to show you what it does. I just want to see if this does anything similar. So. Not really. So Ken Oliver does a color bursts. You would have to actually smear this in. It still kind of does the thing though. Get it wet. It does the thing. Kind of. I'll show you what the Ken Oliver does. If I can find it is over here. Oh. This is Ken Oliver Color Burst. And I'll show you what, watch what it does when you get, put it on water. It's so much fun. Boo!
that cool? So yeah, Ken Oliver Color Burst. So it's concentrated watercolor powder. Oops, sorry, I'm out of screen here. So cool. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, yeah, so great deal on these mica powders. You could mix them with, you know, your watercolor paint if you wanted to, or we saw that it goes well with the um, gloss texture paste. I've got the shimmery goodness too. Um, I feel it would mix just fine with it. It just would be double shimmery. Okay, so cool deal on these things. I, I love it. Let me try and get them all in the box. Now the lady that bought hers, they sent her a little spoon, but they didn't send me a little spoon. I guess because who knows? Nope, no little spoon. And get these put away because I want to do something else. And I'm just going to do a sloppy job putting away. I hope I closed the lid on all of them. I probably didn't because that's just my MO. I mean, you can't get them back in the box. I'm going to have to get a different box for them. Okay, good enough. Let's get those out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. We'll let this dry to the side. And I wanted to show you some stamps that I got. So these I got from Fairy Hugs Stamper. I got this little quirky cat. I don't know. I like cats, and I like them to be weird cats so he's definitely weird looks to be about two inches then this is from Nellie's Choice it's a little oh I don't know a little branch and then I'm all over any mandala so I got this mandala stamp that's a good size stamp that'll go nicely on a like a five inch square card and then these ones I'd never seen this designer before um, her name it's Marlene's World and the name of the stamp says Sweet Birdie. And I'll show you a picture on the back what they look like. Aren't those cool? I love those. So because I'm a designer for uh, on the design team for uh, Fairy Hug stamps, I get I get to shop every month, and uh, I pretty much had my fill of Fairy Hug stamps until they came out with the new ones. So I bought others. And then uh, lastly, I wanted to show you. Um, what I've been doing here. Hi, Mary. How much are those brush shows? Yeah, there's a bold green. Where'd they go? Let's see. I mean, that's kind of a... This one's kind of a, not really that bold. I think the avocado was the bold one. There's kind of an avocado, but it's to me that's more of a bluey green. You could probably mix them. Uh, let's see, any other greens? Uh, pear? Uh, this is a green apple. Yeah, kiwi. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, okay. There's five shades of green. Oh, yeah see I wouldn't mind having those um, just because you know I really don't want to muddy up my colors um, so I wanted to show you these backgrounds that I made in Photoshop it's kind of hard to see let's see here it's just you know blah blah blah, blah. But, you know, you can do a lot of stuff if you're working with silhouette stamps. And then um, this one, uh, let me be honest with you, th this was using Distress Oxides and sprays, but I have no idea what I sprayed on there to make it gold. No clue. <laughs> you like the kiwi one? Uh, let's see here. Also Photoshop created. I thought one of those birds would look neat on there. Photoshop. I was thinking that I might like, I don't know, put a package together on an Etsy store. It's Photoshop again. Um, this one was done with Distress Oxides and I took this foil 
and I'm sorry it doesn't have a label on it, but this is the foil that's laminating foil that came from the um, Blue Bonnet, um, from the, you know, the Facebook lady. I got the gold and I got the kind of the silver iridescent. And I thought, you know what, let's add some fun little elements to this. So I just used a scrap piece and just kind of laid them on there and laminated it. And I thought, that looks pretty cool. <sighs> let's see here. And then these were, see, I created this circular text. Now, uh, Lavinia has a circular, circular text one. It says a lot about fairies and stuff like that um but i just wanted to say other things <laughs> so um i followed a tutorial and figured out how to do spiral text in photoshop so i did i printed out a bunch of those and this is desiderata and anybody that's old will remember um you are a child of the universe la 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 la, la. i can't sing on there because then and then another photoshop created so why don't we try I'm going to try on one of these simpler ones, this bird in flight. Will she go on there? These are huge, guys. They're huge. She won't go on there. Maybe this one will go on here. Okay. Let's try that. And I'm definitely going to use my stamp platform for this. Thank you. Six dollars a container. Yeah, but I, I would say that brushos are definitely a bit better more highly pigmented because these are micas and so mica is a little bit different than powdered color so i read because mica's got the shimmer in it i don't know i don't know so these are supposed to be poly poly polyphone how do you say that word poly Never mind. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's supposed to be that. And we're going to find out now. See, Bird's not going to stamp very well on that one. Don't want to stamp it sideways. That'll look crazy. I like it on here, but that's going to have to be black. That's going to have to be in black, huh? What do you think? Yeah, that's true. It could go off the edge. But which one? I think, yeah, this one, because if the bird went off the edge on this and the rainbow's going off the edge, it'll be lopsided. But here, oh, you know what? I mean, this, I have this trimmed down to four by five and a quarter. So, you know what? I think he's going to fit just fine and I'll ground him down here. Let me get my Misty out. I got my little sticker <laughs> and this I have this stuff that Jennifer McGuire uses I'm on the fence about it because I think it's still a little too sticky I'm just gonna mess with it and make it not quite so sticky but one thing it does stay in the corner nicely and let me just go ahead and lay this here in the corner because I have a feeling I'm poly photopolymer that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> Oh, you know, let's get that head up in that rainbow a little bit. All right, here goes. Let's see how nicely these stamp. And I will use the VersaFine Claire. I can already tell it's going to need more than one. This is a very fine detailed stamp. Good for coloring if you feel like coloring. See, I didn't eat my Skittles, Chucky. Chunky. Hi, Chow. This is just a practice session, but I figured I'd do it live. Oh man, those stamp really nice. I think I want to go once more with it though. Really nice. I figured I'd go early in the day, and that way, if people were on and they felt like jumping on, great, but my feelers wouldn't get hurt if nobody came. <laughs> I forgot. 
I missed part of the helmet or the crown here. Let's see here. Just one more for good measure. Yeah, I'm eating the M&M's. Yeah, I did. Hi, Melissa. Okay. Oh, yeah. that These stamp, they're really soft and pliable. So I thought for sure it wouldn't stamp very well, but it really stamped nicely. And so I would color that. I don't even kind of want to color it. I kind of like it the way it is, but I do need to ground it here. Now this stuff worked out okay. Now this one, I think it came in like a 12 by 12 and I just cut it down. But that's the only thing. Once you get stamping goop on there, you can't get it off. So there's that clean that off a bit I don't use the magnets they just get in my way so meh. well hi Cheryl love dance learns good good any kind of movement any kind of movement all right so if I had colored pencils I probably would pencil this but I just like the way the head kind of goes into the rainbow so let's do let's just make a little grounding situation here and we'll do that with some distress oxide here let's see let me get my i think i'll do it really light with the scattered straw and i'm just gonna real quick take a piece of paper and make myself a little stencil thingy and this is how I do them. <laughs> I just rip paper. And how. Oh. So we're going to be sitting on. See that distress oxide is going to cover the black on the feet. But it's too bad because I want it to. Um, all right, guys, where should I put this doggone thing? And uh, first of all, I need to be this way. Okay. Let's get a. I'm doing a live and don't come in here burping. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> there we go. And just kind of lighten it down. And I don't know what paper I just used, but it sure doesn't want to cooperate very well. And let's go a little bit over here. And then just kind of blend it out here. Would you guys color this bird? And not liking the way that's shaping up right there. Let's get a little heavy on it there. There we go. Maybe the, um, because I printed this out, maybe the printer ink kind of makes things stick. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know, right? I was supposed to tell him, but it, I forgot. This, see, it doesn't want to blend very well, and I have a feeling it's because of the printer ink. But let's give it a little more right here. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, for just a real quick, simple stamping, that bird is everything. I just, if I were to color it at all, it would be very light colors, but I wouldn't color the head at all. And then you could put a cinnamon along there, which I'm not going to do, because, you know, I don't do that very much. <gasps> oh, it's just a fly. I thought there was a spider. There's a giant fly in here. <laughs> so, anyways, I really like this. This is a good, good, good stamp set. I don't... Again, I got this from the Fairy Stamper store. And uh, once the video's over, I'll link below. Here's how she colored them. Let me get the 
see, I, Pam, I didn't listen to you and I opened it from this end. So it's got the sticky goober. Still kind of shiny, but I love, love, love how she colored them. <laughs> Mike, shut up. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> okay, so I, I did want to show you, because I made a bunch of these beads this morning. And I just kind of wanted to show you how they came out. This one is meant to be like a button on the end. Um, but I made all, get out of here, you stupid fly. It keeps creeping out of that box and scaring me. <laughs> uh, all of them were done with the, uh, that uh, Tim Holtz um, paper pack. It's called Abandon, I think. And so I had ordered, and I was waiting for these to come, I had ordered some grommets, and these ones are, one size is too big, the other size is too small, so I have to order a four millimeter. So it's tricky because I used the five millimeter paper roller, right? But the holes are probably more like 4.25, because um, my five millimeter crochet hook wouldn't hit fit in the end, and my four was too small, so, um, I'm gonna have to, I really feel like I, this kind of stuff I should buy in person. I mean, I'll find a use for these. It'll work for the smaller beads or it'll work for great big beads, but it does not work for these. Um, yeah, I know, I mean, I hear you. Yeah, it is a wonderful bird stamp. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. And you could have a lot of fun coloring it any way you want it. I love the way she colored it. Anyway, Marlene's World. She's got a lot of really cool stamps like this. And then we could try the mandala. You want to? Let's try the mandala. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, I'll just do that. There we go. I hate it. I don't, well, that's fine. Let it stick, whatever. Now, I have a feeling this one is one of those really sticky ones. And this, these are Nellie's Choice stamps. I'm just going to rub on it while it's on that thing. This one definitely would be a color, color it. Or, or, man, this thing is stuck like Chuck on here. <laughs> I could end up bending my transparent piece trying to get it off. Oh, really? I mean, it shouldn't be this hard. <sighs> Probably got hot somewhere or something. I don't know. I hope I don't stretch it out of shape trying to get it off here, if that's possible. I mean, if I can stretch something out of shape, it'll happen. Almost. <laughs> okay, look at that. You know what? I'm going to... It's going to be too big for that. It really needs to be on a square piece. We'll just do it on white. We'll do it on this piece that I um, cut the little stencil out of. Okay. Oh, good idea, Mary. All right, so let's get this all stuck nice in the corner here. And I'm gonna put it pretty fairly central so I have options when I'm done. Okay, and it did stick to that just fine. Uh, am I gonna wanna emboss this? Nope, I don't. Cause I'm gonna probably end up cutting it out. See how well this one stamps. Okay, I can see right there it didn't hit. Oops. Y'all, so hot here today. How is it there? Emboss resist. Yeah, like Joseph's coat or something. Oh, surprise! Not bad definitely is going to need another round, but for a first time using a stamp, I'm, I'm impressed. I had stamps 
back in the 90s when it first started getting popular and they were you know the rubber stamps that were on wood and let me tell you I am the worst aim you could possibly imagine and I could never get anything straight so I said nope this isn't a hobby I want to try <laughs> cold oh my gosh I am roasting it might be that I'm nervous but I don't know I had to work a little bit today and it was one of those days where I got every call I got was somebody really mad so that kind of gets my blood pressure up I think <laughs> all right you ready yeah yeah I'm good I'm good uh, let's see it completely cleared off the stamp would I use a Catherine Puller ink with this? Probably not. Just because I've wrecked too many stamps with it. I love how well it stamps, but. And the memento stamp's pretty good too. Where'd I put the, oh, that's right. It was totally stuck to the, the back piece is stuck on with that really super sticky stuff that makes you crazy. How would you guys color this? Oh, Mary, my kids, uh, two of my kids and uh, grandkids live in Oregon. They live in, one son lives in Grants Pass and one son lives in Jacksonville. Uh, okay, Pam, now I can't get it back in the bag. <laughs> I'm fighting with the bag here. Forget it. Okay. How would you guys color this? I don't have any pencils, so don't say pencils. <laughs> I have, uh, let's see, I have, I have watercolor markers. I have these guys. Maybe. Oh, good idea, Pam. Um, hmm. Okay. So the tree is kind of open work. So let's go with Pam's purple hair. And I'm going to be cutting this out, so I'll use this as a smudgy. And let's just color in the flower parts purple. Maybe a little on the dark side would be fine, I think. This might take a long time. Talk amongst yourself. Now, would you see these as flowers or leaves right here? Oh, Mary, yeah. So, um, by Cheryl. Yeah, definitely. I love to uh, I love to actually watercolor with the oxides, but the other thing that I like to do is do the painting, and then leave the stamp in the platform and put it, stamp it back down afterwards. So I've got a good black going. Let's just pretend this part's a flower, and maybe the part behind it's a leaf. It's hard to decide <laughs> what's flowers, what's leaves. I mean, I guess it's your own imagination how you do it. Just poke them here and there and see where it goes. Those look like definitely leaves. Okay, we'll make these flowers. What tree has purple flowers on it? Get me a Coke too. I'm gonna kill him, by the way. You heard me right, honey. Stay off my channel. Now, oh, he's my biggest supporter, so I'm sorry. Okay. There are some purples. We might go in, yeah, here's a couple more that look like they should be purple. I 
I'm so blind anymore. Uh, I think these should be purple too. I'm going to end up making the whole thing purple. But it's mandala, so... And I love the Tree of Life. It's my fave. That's enough of this purple. Let me just set it aside so I know I've used it already. These are weird. These are the King's Art dual tip brushes. And they're not true to the color on the cap at all. See? <laughs> not at all. Um, I got them at Tuesday morning for super cheap. Probably $10 for the whole pack. And... I bought them before I knew what I wanted. Look, where's my... Yeah, see, I have a color wheel. So let's grab that purple that I just used. And... Yeah, no, not this one. There aren't a lot of green choices here, so... Um, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Oops, I just see another purple I missed. I could see this one done in browns and stuff, too. So, uh, okay. That's going to have to be brown. Alright, so we'll just grab some leaves here. Well, see, I got that on and I don't like it, but too late. That should be purple. Anybody ever color one of those Zentangle things? I'm telling you. Better off to just do a rainbow over it and call it done. Yeah, I think you're right. Right, Mary? I think you're right, too. Coloring the cardstock, then stamping in black might be enough. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Stamping in black or or stamping it and embossing it with gold or silver or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about that green I just picked. But I'm committed to it now, so that's what we'll do. I don't like coloring either. I don't, I mean, I don't mind coloring, but when it comes to something like this, I just second guess myself on what it should be looking like. I mean, I definitely feel like this part should be blue, but I have a feeling I don't have a good enough blue. I may have to whip out my uh, oxides and paint it. Or maybe I'll just leave it white. Now I'm cheating big time. I'm going to go in on the tops of those purple ones and hopefully I can find a lighter purple. Because I feel like it's just a flower. I get into the zone here when I'm coloring. Okay. A little green, a little dot of green. All right, let's see if I can find another shade of purple that will work. Mm, that one's warm, that one's cool. I know like to. Okay, no, that's a gray. There's not a lot of choices here. All right, we're going in with the warm. I have alcohol markers, but it doesn't work very well with um, the Nocturne ink, as far as I'm concerned. And they're... they're um, they're Cali Arts. I just spit on my... Okay. Whoever gets this card has my DNA. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I've got a cat crying at the door. Oh, see, these should have been purple too. Okay. See, more shall be revealed. Is my head in the way? No. Do you guys need me to zoom in? If I zoom in, though, we'll have a problem. But I'm terrible at this. This is why it's a good idea to emboss them first. You really have to kind of be careful. Not that green. There we go. Better. So I have this cat who, um, he won't drink water, oops, that one needs to be done too, he won't drink water out of a bowl. He insists that it only can come out of a faucet and particularly my bathroom. So there's that. And then on top of that, he's not satisfied with me walking in there and turning on the water. He has to have a head boop once, sometimes twice. I'm telling you, cats. You guys have pets? I wonder what that would look like if you embossed it afterwards. Huh. Leaf. Leaf. It's so fun to watch him do the water though because he looks like a wild cat in the wild drinking out of a lake or a river or a stream or something. He's a tabby and he's humongous. I mean, not as big as like, you know, Pinterest big, but he's big compared to all the other cats. So, um, I applied for and got accepted to the video design team for Fairy Hugs. For Fairy Stamper, I don't know, it gets confusing, but, um, so I'll be doing two videos a month for them. Of course, they won't be lives. And then eventually they'll get posted on my own page as well. I have another cat. I have my office is weird because I have a door and then I have like almost it's almost like a bar door that Mike built for me. Um, it's it's airy because I'm a little bit claustrophobic and I can't stand to be closed in this room, but I can't have animals in here and particularly not when I'm working um, because I share this room. But in October, I'm moving out of this room as far as work goes because Verizon is sending us all new desks and chairs. And so the desk I'm using is a desk that I share with my personal computer and um, so I'm going to move downstairs and I'm going to take that seven feet of space so I can use my Cricut sometimes because right now it's on a rolling cart buried under a bunch of stuff that I have to move every time I want to use it. I see they're not identical on either side but they're close. These uh, elements, leaves, flowers, whatever. Okay, and I missed one right there. Yeah, I really hate to do anything with the white part. Bye, Pam. Oh, you have a waterfall the cat gets in? No, no so yeah, any other water is a, is a no-go for beep. It's only going to be if it's um, the bathroom running water. I think I'll just keep the tree green.
yeah I like it just green and even the, though these have a really fine tip on them doesn't mean I have a steady hand <laughs> I'm only doing the closed parts. Well, they actually are all kind of closed, but the parts that look like a trunk of a tree. And I think I will. Nope, don't want to do that. So I want to do the outside, but I know from experience that yellow will smudge on no matter what unless I have heat embossed it first. Nope, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, no, definitely not hot paint. Let's see. This is probably too dark. I'll do this along here. In true mandala style, should have a lot of colors on it. Do. I don't know. I haven't used them. Uh, Lisa's stuff. The only stuff I have of Lisa's are a few stamps. I would think. I don't. I mean, this is like a paintbrush end almost. I don't know if the ends ends are fine or not. I haven't seen them. What do you know, Chow? Oh yes, I am liking, I am liking that. So my husband's retired and he gets bored. <laughs> if you ever see an off color comment on my YouTubes, he has several names, don't ask. Um, those are him. And when I say off color, just like, like the comment he made about uh, filling a chunky with bourbon. See, I might like a really light green on here, but I don't have one. No, not this one, like a super light. Nope, uh -uh, I don't like it, I can see already. This is the lightest blue I have, and watch. Still gonna like it. Yep, I like it. You know what I could do? Is I could put, um, put some clear, some embossing glaze here, um, you know, one of the Tim Holtz blue ones. Of course, it's going to change the tone of everything, but oh, okay. A nib, like a nibbed in. Now this one, I feel no problem slapping a sentiment across it. So I'm gonna leave that background part white since, again, I don't have a light enough blue of the same kind of pen. One of these days, I'll get some of those zigzags or zag, whatever those are that everybody's using, those watercolor markers. Hmm, yes, I like it. I'll put my pens away later. I don't want to waste time here. 
So do you think that I can cut out a circle like this? <laughs> uh, if you do, you're wrong. I can't cut anything straight. There we go. Try and get this in where you can see it. Okay. Now let me find my infinity circle dies. I usually keep those handy. That being said, they're not handy. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if they're in here. I have a die binder. They just used to hold DVDs. Where are my infinity circles? And this is just for I have ovals. I know they're not in here then. I have like a couple of things I have here that I use, frequently use dies and stuff. Okay, found them. Well, I found the. Alright, it's gonna be flipped around. Let me just pull this over here. This, uh, these are just like my sentiment dies so that. Um, because I um, can't use uh, sentiment stamps on my design team. Um, I use these. Here's that little, here's that little gnome. Okay, so I saw my infinity, this thing. Guys, I don't. <sighs> Well, obviously, I don't know where those are. Out comes the scissors. <laughs> I prefer die cut circles just because um, I like the way that when you die cut something, it kind of finishes off the edge nice and neat. So I'll just cut this very carefully with the large scissors. That out of my way. The hard part you never see people do, or they get it perfect. There's nothing perfect in my world. When I used to make quilts, I used to make a lot of mistakes, but then I found out that the Amish purposely put mistakes in their quilts. Um, I think my understanding was because only God could do be perfect. And so um, I just went around saying I was Amish. But I thought that was kind of a cool little story. There. See, I goofed up right there. No problemo. Just grab my black pen. Give it a little whoopsie. Again, I'm terrible at cutting things. And I always try and this one's running out. This is one of those King's Arts too. I probably had them for about eight, nine months. When I first started card making, that's all I used. So that goes over there. All right, now let's see here. I don't think that any of these backgrounds that I made are suitable for this. Definitely not. Mm. That's kind of cool, but nah. How about that? If I had any wall space, that's such a great idea. Y yeah, lucky I don't have to do I don't have to do stamp or Sharon. <laughs> oh. I got a card from Suzanne Anderson today. Oh, it's so beautiful. This just seems really plain. Oh, okay, I know what to do. It needs some it needs some sparkle, huh? But I like it. Kind of like that. Just also just like that. Maybe I'm gonna pop it up a little on there. But let's do this. Let's get where is my wink of Stella? 
have this. Oh, I have this cool stuff. It's from Spectrum Noir. I got it from HSN, I think. Anyway, it's really pearly. But I've known, I've used it before, and it does kind of smear. So it's from Crafter's Companion. It's called Crystal Clear Sparkle Glitter Ink. Do I want to risk smudging it? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think I'm just going to leave it. Guys, I'm having a hard time deciding here. Well, I'll leave it. I'm going to go ahead and get... Do I want to stick it directly on? If I stick, stick it directly on, then it's a nice flat card. And I don't have any fights sending it in the mail. Yeah, I'm going to stick it directly on. And I'm going to get out my reptile adhesive. And now, here's the thing about a lot of these white glues. is I like to prime them after I pull the pen out because my pens aren't stainless. And so sometimes you'll get a little rusty color. This one's okay because I was using it earlier today. But if it sits for a day or so, it'll get rusty on me. And I'm just going to... Yeah. And I'm going to put it in the middle. You get a little wiggle room with this. I don't know. I still want... You know what? I could put gems on there, I guess. I kind of like it just with the white. Alright, let's find a sentiment here. Um... I'll go with hello. I want to just go with the small portion of the hello and I cut it out of some. Oh, I know. I've got all of these and I cut these out. Um, for future use. So this one, um, I just use a scrap of vinyl. Yeah, I like that. And, um, you know, cut it out by, I want to say it's about four and a half by two and a quarter. So I can get a couple of hellos in that, but I only want one. Y'all, I do a lot of stuff with my vinyl that I don't use on my Cricut because it's so hard to get to my Cricut and I don't know I only have use for so much vinyl stickers I like my sidekick for this little job because easy to get out so see, that vinyl comes out just fine. Comes out real nice. Get this out of my way. I bought a new one of these because mine I stretched out by heating it. Lesson learned. Yeah, I think that's going to need the backing piece. And I think I'll do that in white. Just use one of my white scraps here. Just kind of gets lost in the mandala without something to back it. Do I want to raise? Now I'm not going to raise anything up because 
so much hassle I get with trying to ship things. If you don't have a sidekick, man, these things are so handy for just tiny little cuts. I don't know what I dropped there, but whatever it is, it'll be fine. You know, just a quick cut that out, make it gone. And I have a pokey tool, but I can't be asked to get it out. If these won't poke out with my fingers, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and almost grab my colors, grab my glue. So, and I, I, I um, stuck the vinyl to just some uh, opaque accent, 120 or 110 pound cardstock. Not any, no big deal, but it does give it that heft that it needs. Okay. It's kind of cool to be able to look at it from here and see what it's actually going to look like. I love that. Yeah, I like it. Does what fit sideways? Oh. <laughs> I'm a little behind because paying attention to what I'm trying to do here. Waiting for it to catch up on the screen to see where I like it. Yeah, I like it right here. I don't want to cover up too much of my little tree. Now, I don't have a decal trimmer, so I won't be doing any deckling today. Um, I don't think I'll buy one. They're okay, but nah. Okay, so that is this. Now, these are cheap recollections. They came from Michael's. And... I don't think it's going to withstand the weight of this. So. Just grab a white. Wonder though if I want to trim around these corners here. Let's see, what did I do with those fancy chompers of mine? Here they are. Uh, of course, my camera's got them. These the ones? No. These are the ones. This thing here, it does either, where are the pictures? Like a deco corner or like a ticket stub? I think I'll do the deco. Okay, let's see what happens. It doesn't seem like, yeah, that works. It just clumps them out there. trick is, is getting it in there straight. Oh, you know what? I mean, I have a, I have a huge guillotine trimmer. It's a swing line, but it cuts the 12 by 12 paper. So, or if I want to cut, you know, if I want to do a top folding card, I can't cut that in my Tim Holtz trimmer. Yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to, yep, guess what? I'm going to trim off these corners too. These are great, but they're not cheap. I don't remember, I think I paid like 30 bucks for the stupid things I rarely use. was one of those I gotta have it. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy with that. Hey, I appreciate oh clonk. I appreciate you guys stopping in for my little practice session here. I just I'm not one of those people that gives up. 
I played with it a little bit last night, and you know, in a private setting, and I went, okay, so I can get this to go the direction I need it to go. I'll try it live and see what happens. Eh. I may have to trim a little bit off of that wipe. I'm just gonna set this on here. It's not gonna really work because that hello is sticking up, so I'll just do two of them. Okay, or not. That's one thing, once you could, probably should have done this first, but you know, sometimes you just design on the fly. So there we go, just a little, little quick hello. Oh, that's cool, Sharon. Uh, now, yeah, my husband just looks at me sideways every time I get something new, but he doesn't really say anything. Um, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm pretty spoiled. I know you're listening, Mike, so I have to say a lot of nice things. Hey, thank you, Meg. Anyway, that's all I have. Do you guys have questions for me? Let's put that where you can see. Thank you. Yeah, the corners did the trick because it was kind of meh. Probably would take maybe a purple pen and go around, but I'm not going to. Anyway, that's, um, again, for those who came in later, this is some paper that I made in Photoshop and printed. Yeah, let's get your husband to make a card. Oh, Meg, the stamp. This is um, this is from the Fairy Stamper store. This is the Nellie's Choice. Um, <coughs> it's the Tree Mandala. Look at that peacock one. I never even saw that one in the store. But um, I got, yeah, I got it with our last gift certificate. And by the way, if you weren't here, I did apply for and was accepted to the video design team. So... Uh, my favorite stamping supplies. Ooh, boy. Let me see. What do I reach for most? I'd have to say probably paper. Oh, that's sweet of him. I, my husband doesn't have any kind of design sense at all, so he doesn't care. Um, but he usually likes what I make. And uh, the other stamp that I did, Meg, was this, where'd it go? See, it's here somewhere. I buried it. Oh, I put it off to the side. Where? <laughs> I can't find it. You guys, I know it's here because I just used it a minute ago. But this, it's this stamp set. And it, these are the stamps. And this was also from Fairy, Fairy Hugs, Fairy Stamper. Um, it's called Sweet Birdie from Marlene's World, made in the UK. I don't know, I like English stamps a lot. I've made a sample here too, but I can't find it anywhere. That's just crazy. Yep, it's, no, the sample is nowhere. I know it was on a rainbow. Wait a minute. Nope. There it is. Buried here. And this is usually the state of my desk. Here's how this stamps out. This was just, it was almost this good with just one stamp, but this was two stamps. And I didn't want to color it because I liked the way the coloring went on his head. If anything, I would color the background in and leave his head. So, I hope that I did answer your question about my favorite supplies. It's probably paper. My paper and my inks, my oxide inks, my regular inks, um, ink, ink and paper. Do I like the stamps themselves? Not really. Do I have a lot? Oh, too many. I have probably, don't tell my husband, I probably have over a thousand dollars worth of Tim Holtz stamps. Thanks, Meg. I did that in my, um, I did that electronically with, um, Photoshop. 
So, I mean, we could do it by hand, but, you know, I made all these backgrounds, and I'm like, well, I might as well use them. I really love this one. It's, you probably can't see the writing, but it's got the words to both sides now. And so I thought they fit with clouds and this balloon flying through the air, whatever this steampunk balloon thingy. <laughs> So anyways, guys, I'm going to close for now. Um, thank you for attending my practice session. I really appreciated your um, support and your continuing support uh, for my videos and stuff like that. And um, if you ever have any questions for me, my email is Ms. Ms. Tracy Fear at gmail.com. And you can find me, of course, at Boying Snobs Club. You can always instant message me. And I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Thanks, ciao. Okay, and end. I pressed the end button. End, okay. <laughs>